All right, everybody, welcome back to the Rusty Tub. This is part two, take two, I should say, of the recording for today. I've been having some trouble as usual. I still don't understand why the audio sounds like garbage. Maybe it's just the sound of my own voice. If you see what's coming in to, through the fog of war today, that is a mass overdrive uh, ship. I found this thing the other day. I was It was peeking at me through my mini-map. I thought, what the heck is that thing? And I, I went to the location. I thought, maybe it's a downed ship. That is not the case. It is a flying ship, and it looks majestic. I have no idea what all this stuff is about. Part of me thinks that it's just... Um, it's all cosmetic. So uh, what I did was I went in here. Can I give you a preview? And uh, there were a few androids in here. And when I killed them, they gave me android parts. There's a little cabin. It's got some stuff in it. Did I take all this stuff out? Hmm. This is encouraging. Okay. I must have taken all this stuff out. Uh, but it looks like... They were harvesting from our world. And they mostly wanted this Tritanium ore. Okay, but anyways. So that's pretty cool. It wasn't a big thing. There wasn't uh, any spawners in here. It just a few cyborgs. And speaking of cyborgs, matter network cables. I'm curious about this mod. It, it looks interesting. Uh, I didn't bring it with me. So uh, I got a laser gun the other day, and this thing can mine blocks from like a whole chunk away. It's pretty incredible. I'll show it to you when we get back to town. But I'm going to patch that up. I'm going to head back to town, and I'm going to show you guys some of the things that I've been working on for the last few days and how they all come together. I'll see you. So while I'm cruising back into the, into the home base, getting quite close to it, I wanted to talk about the world terrain generation. We're using a special type of terrain generation called RTG realistic terrain generation and if you look at the map you will see that we have rivers that run all the way out to oceans I've done some ex this river comes all the way out to the ocean here this ocean is massive um, it also means that some specific resources are difficult to acquire and you will I it took me it took me two hours to find some chickens and I probably went in the wrong direction but I finally found cactus. I found cactus while I was looking for, let's see, so while I was looking for squid, I needed some black ink. Well, I didn't find any squid this whole time here. None. Uh, all of this exploration I did in search of squid didn't find any, but I did find my first desert. And I picked up a bunch of the cactus that was there and took it right back to town. And I also realized that I could use the black mystic flowers petals and make black dye. So I got some cactus. Uh, I wanted to kind of talk about uh, the layout of the town. Uh, that central circle there is the is the storage hub, which we'll get a tour of in a moment here. Um, this this building that I'm pointing at now that's where the ore processing is at. We have some pretty serious uh, energy problems with it. I'm uh, just using these heat generators. And I think Locke was... See, if you, you put your ore in here, it gets processed in the sag mills and then pushed over to the alloy smelters and then cooked up and then the product comes out, out that chest. So i got a couple of machines there. Here's the heat room. Nearly finished, just need some more glass. That's just to provide some starter energy. Nothing, uh, nothing huge. I've uh, been making some obsidian. This drum, I'm going to bring this drum back into play later. Um, before we, I'm going to show you some stuff that I've done in another, and I'll bring that along with me. But uh, these facilities are just to kind of have some easy access material. Some some plants. It's It's usually with regards to the crops, I find that you either need none or you need a lot all at once. So that's kind of there to buffer the needs there. Smeltery looks great, I think. It looks pretty awesome. Um, certainly could be upgraded if you'd like. I'll see. 
about to die. Emergency hover mode activated. There we go. Okay. So. Uh, the inside the storage facility, we've got all our metals here. If I had some metal materials and I just wanted to dump them all at once, just double right click on the controller. They go in there. Eventually the applied energistics terminal will be on that wall. And we haven't done anything with applied energistics because we're still missing some inscriber presses. I think it's the calculation press. Oh. And I have found a couple meteors. There's one. Um, there's another one. I forget. Ah, uh, it doesn't matter. So why am I still looking? <laughs> okay. I uh, found a, a few. They're pretty scattered. Um, but they're pretty neat. Uh, the This wall here, personal storage, pick two. Each of these chests should have a sign in it. You know, grab a couple, put your names on it. The idea here is if you're working on any project projects and you have to go and you don't want anybody jacking your stuff, rare materials or something like that, uh, before you want to volunteer them over to community resources, you can stick them here. You know, like Locke is working on a big reactor, so he's got a lot of the graphite and glass and things that he needs for the big reactor. This rare shader bag tells me that he killed a net a wither. That asshole. Oh. <laughs> okay, it's probably why he needed that fucking division sigil because he's about to make himself some wings. Oh, I'm so jealous. Anyways, uh, I'll show you where he got all that stuff. I'm sure. Here's my laser gun. It does mining, but it also shoots. Two shots for a zombie, uh, nine shots for a naga. They're coming out of the cactus because I probably have dark spots there. And they go straight for those villagers. That's funny. It also mines at a great distance. This laser gun I got from a legendary bender. Kind of sounds cool. It doesn't have infinite range, but it's pretty close. Let's, um, okay, so the machine shop, the storage facility, might want to tear that building down. I'd like to make a spot for uh, an enchanting area. That whole area right there, this big chunk here is totally up for grabs. So is this really. I mean, any of it. Uh, there's no plan set in motion. I did clear this spot if Locke wanted to build a... He's looking at building a big reactor. I wonder if this is what he used to kill the nether, the wither. Hmm. I'll have to ask him. He's always got these really wonderful solutions, like the dark iron bars. Why am I making this stuff when I can just use this? Hmm. Hmm. Indeed. So going into the nether, I want to show a couple of things off that I've done here. I saw that Sierra Christie was. Uh, I forgot to bring that drum was was working on a mob spawner and the mob spawners that she was using were from the roguelike dungeons and they don't actually uh, they don't go native as she as she put it they will stick with um, just the specific type of armored skeleton or armored um, zombie and I, I didn't know that I was gonna try I was gonna try that very same thing but I was uh, I found a thomic dungeon just south of us and they had a mob uh, skeleton spawner, so I grabbed a vanilla skeleton spawner. Grab that. This area is probably much larger than it needs to be, but it is sufficient. Um, I don't have blazes spawning outside of the area. Um, this process works pretty well. Uh, it doesn't have cursed earth, so it's not running 24 7, and I don't have any chunk loaders. The. Excess here, I'm pretty sure that's where you got the skulls from. Um, I, I do need to find a way to get rid of these swords. You know, I can put a filter out here in a trash can. But otherwise, um, yeah, you just hang out here for a few hours, or, you know, for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, get yourself some, some skulls. I'll probably grab some for myself and then go pop yourself a wither. That's what I've been working on is uh, caging a, w a wither here using these blocks. Not very fancy, but should get the job done. Um, and it's been uh, 
I mean, it, I think I think I did two stacks and I only got five. I really need to just be using those dark iron bars. I think this will be sufficient. Much easier to make. Uh, what else? Oh, and the last thing is. Sorry for all the gross noises. Um, the last thing is the uh, lava. So I've been going back and forth to this spot to scoop up buckets of lava for a great deal of time. And I thought, you know, why not make a pump? It's not an endothermic pump, which is preferred. Uh, and pump this small area out. And I thought I'd just pump this small area out. I didn't realize how big of an area the pump works in. So one of the first things that I'm going to do today is I'm going to replace this pump with an endothermic pump and I hope that will address this issue. Uh, it's, not a, it's not a good thing to have so much flowing lava with players that have poor system performance and it's, you know, kind of see, see it's out there too. Looks like it's just going in all of them. So, so I'll get an endothermic pump out here and hook up uh, maybe an ender tank. Uh, chunk loading is still an issue. Um, I have decided to keep the settings on the server as default as possible. If there's anybody that's, uh, you know, put it contributed to server costs, which some of you guys have exceeded, far exceeded um, your sh your fair portion. Uh, and and thank you for that. So if any of you that have contributed, you know, you want some of the default settings like. I don't know if mob griefing is enabled. That's hard for me to tell. They, I think they blow up dirt, but they don't blow up player blocks. I can't remember. But, you know, or if it's, um, you know, last server we had warp disabled, and that was because I didn't know that there was a, from Thomcraft, I didn't know there was a way to manage warp. Uh, but there is. There's a there's a way to, to properly set up warp. So if you wanted to get involved in Thomcraft, you can do that, and I'd leave that open because that's part of the mod pack. And so generally, I'm trying to keep as a, a as a close to the design intent of the mod creator as possible. But if there's something that's just ruining your day, please let me know, and I'll do what I can to fix it. Like we were talking about morph, and so this is a side note, but we were talking about morph the other day, and why don't uh, bats give us creative flight? Um. I was reading in the quest blog, and it said something about going into the nether and killing a bat in the nether. See, I have flight with this wisp. Huh. Let's see how that works. And it doesn't reduce my HP? Whoa! Look at that. Well, there you go. Holy shit. Hmm. Okay, so, but that was uh, that was one of the things. Yeah, man, I've still got all my stats and everything, and I'm smaller. Uh, I could just imagine. This will be like, somebody will say, like, oh, I need some ethereal essence. And they'll pull out their signal and... Oh, what? <laughs> what? What was that? <laughs> oh, God, I almost died. Uh, they'll pull out their signal and crossbow, and they'll take one shot at me, and I'll be dead. Right? That's exactly what I did to Warham the other day. I was like, oh my god, there's one of those floating eye things. And I type it out. I'm like, careful, there's another one of them. <laughs> I took one shot and he was toast. And I was like, oh no, why is there a gravestone here? I don't understand. Anyways. So those are the two things that I've done in the nether. And uh, this project is pretty much done. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy having all that stuff in the same location. I hope that it's easy to navigate. I really do. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing some of the stuff, some of the stuff that you guys work on. All right, uh, that's it all for me today. I'll talk to you guys soon, and uh, let's cross our fingers and hope the recording went well.